Does it start? What? What? Huh? I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Power Factor. Uh, we're discussing today equipment uh, as a series of episodes that are building up to shooting your first match. Uh, we discussed in the past uh, episodes belts and belt mounted gear. Today we're going more into the clothing uh, that the shooter is equipping himself with for the match. Uh, we're going to go head to toe. Well, that depends on whether you, are you a top down kind of guy or a bottom up kind of guy. Yeah, I think we're going to go top down. Okay, so. top down, top and, down. Uh, so we're let, let's go ahead and start well, by yeah, taking this I off. Heard anything you're saying? Exactly. So yeah. keep the volume levels to, right. a, to a, a dull Probably roar. Yelling before. Right. So we're just going to kind of cover each item of clothing where we're going to consider clothing and. Uh, a reasoning behind choosing it, whether it's necessary, unnecessary, and uh, we'll start off with hearing protection. Good place to start. So hearing protection is key um, for all types of shooting that we do, whether it's pistol shooting, rifle shooting. Um, there's probably two different types of general hearing protection, the earmuffs and then earplugs. Um, earmuffs fall into just a standard earmuffs um, that you get. These are uh, your basic uh, Dillon earmuffs. Um, the other types of earmuffs that you can get are the ones that have the elect electronic hearing protection, which allows you to kind of hear what's going on and also protect your hearing. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the electronic ones, primarily because I don't want to hear anything that's going on in the background, especially when your evil buddies are making comments about you while you're standing there in the line and you can hear what they're saying, uh, which is not always good. I am a fan, actually, of, of um, earplugs. The reason I like, like earplugs is they offer a higher noise reduction rating than earmuffs, and earmuffs also end up pressing in my ears while I'm shooting, which I don't like. Um, just as a frame of, of reference, the earplugs, these ones, as an example, have a noise reduction rating of 32 dB. These earmuffs have a noise reduction rating of 21 dB. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, there's a difference of roughly 12 dB uh, between the earmuffs and the earplugs, and the reason I picked 12, in reality the number is 11, um, that for every 3 dB that you're looking at, it's a half power uh, reference in terms of, of noise intensity. So these earplugs are actually roughly four times better than earmuffs, and when it comes to protecting your hearing, I think that's key. Uh, if you're out doing rifle shooting, you may want a double plug, and the reference to that is you use earplugs and earmuffs. Um, but at any rate, I like basically just earplugs for shooting. I wear earmuffs, um, accepting that they're not quite as effective at noise reduction. I like them just because they're convenient. You've got earplugs, and uh, if there's any reason you need to take them off so that you can hear, you know, a conversation or something. It's kind of a hassle to take them out and put them back. Uh, with the the earmuffs, you can just pull them off, put them right back on. Uh, also, uh, they keep your ears warm. They keep your ears warm, exactly, <laughs> depending on where you're shooting. Um, one of another issue, something that I haven't done a whole lot of investigation into, is that you actually can get harmful noise through these, the bones. yeah, through right. the bones right. and these liquid-filled cavities in your skull. And so the ear muff covers a little bit of the side of your skull in addition to your ear, and so you're protecting that part, the non-ear part of the side of your head that can also ab absorb harmful. Uh, uh, levels of noise, and so I've always gone with the muffs. I have double plugged before, but it just makes me feel like my head is full of compressed air. I mean, you yeah. get this sense of these things crammed into your ears, and then the muffs applied over them. I have never really had much experience either with the amplified muffs, um, which allow normal conversation through but block uh, the harmful levels of uh, noise. Um, they're pretty affordable now. They used to be pretty yeah, expensive. Yeah. Now they're pretty affordable, and so yeah, you certainly can something get them for, I've seen them as low as twenty bucks. Yeah, for some of the yeah. electronic ones. Yeah, I should probably point out is what I do with my earplugs. Is I I wear earplugs when I'm shooting. When I'm not shooting, I wear earmuffs and and a earplug. So what I typically do is have an earplug in one ear and my earmuffs on. But when I'm up in the line and actually shooting, I'll take my earmuffs off, put my earplug in. And then shoot, and then when I'm just standing around or playing RO or whatever, I'll use um, earmuffs. Mm -hmm. And I'll carry plugs with me too, either to you know maybe I'll need to loan them to somebody else or whatever. But yeah. I'll, they're easy to keep in your bag, extra multiple sets of them. Um, still, though, I prefer the the muffs. And double plugging is also really good for people who have um, flinch issues and things like that uh, in the very beginning. It's in fact one of the recommendations for people who suffer from a fl flinch problem is to use earmuffs um, and earplugs. It just decreases the noise 
And a lot of times the part of the flinch is actually a, a brain's reaction to, um, to the bang. Mm. So. Okay. All right. And what about the other item that's covering the tops of our heads? What would that be, Rick? The hat. My hat, for example. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting that I actually shot for years without a hat. In fact, I think you recently said, you know, when did you switch to a hat, Steve? And I was like, you know, about, I don't know, three or four years ago. Um, the reason I actually didn't shoot with a hat is I just felt like kind of like the hat covering my, my vision was blocking things. Um, I've since kind of switched my line of thinking on that and that I feel like with a hat on, it kind of directs, directs tunnel vision and, and kind of focuses me where I'm shooting toward or shooting at. So that's the reason why these days I'm, I've switched to a hat. But also a hat does a few other things, key things. Um, it keeps the glare out of your eyes. It also keeps brass from falling down in between your glasses and landing there, which um, is a very unpleasant and painful experience. Um, and I just kind of, I, like I said, kind of directs your vision, uh, kind of focuses you toward the targets. Um, yeah, it, it, and it, it, I wear it mostly uh, because it does keep the glare out of your eyes, but also on a lot of ranges, if you shoot outdoors, there's junk flying around the range, either right. bullet fragments, rocks. Um, at the range I uh, shoot at, most often the trap and skeet ranges are open and they're yeah. immediately adjacent to the action bays. Yeah, and so shot. shot is bouncing off trees and falling into the bays and having the hat there just keeps that junk from falling on your face. Right. And so I think uh, it protects also if you've got, uh, if your hair challenged, uh, it protects you obviously from sunburn and whatnot. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, so I think it makes a lot of sense, uh, both kind of the functionality of shooting keeping the glare out of your eyes, but then also just kind of generally keeping junk off your head. Yeah, the sunburn thing is actually a very good point. Um, that's one of the other reasons why I started wearing a hat, just because of the fact that I do burn easily and yeah. it does keep me from getting a sunburn. So right, I'm right. Okay. Point. Now onto the glasses. Okay, so shooting glasses. Very important that you wear shooting glasses. Um, there's lots. You can get cheap glasses. You can get expensive glasses. Um, I'm actually using UD, Rudy Project glasses. I've been wearing these now for the last six or seven years, uh, well before they became all the rage a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not sponsored by Rudy Project or anything like that, so this is an unbiased comment. The reason I like these is really two points. Um, one, these glasses have a interchangeable lens. So I can go from a dark lens uh, on really bright days to a yellow lens on rainy or overcast days and really tailor the glasses to the shooting environment, um, which I think is, is, is really beneficial. I'm not switching between multiple glasses. I don't have to carry multiple glasses in my range bag. I just have one set of glasses and then a host of different interchangeable lenses that I can pull out and, and use. The other thing I like about the Rudy Project lenses is that they offer a um, lifetime lens replacement guarantee that's for $19 if you scratch the lenses or do anything to them, you can basically just pop them out, send them in, get a new set, put them in, and you're off and running. There's nothing worse than having scratched up lenses. Um, and as infrequent as it can happen, a few years ago, I actually did have, while well, I was being an RO, had a brass piece of brass come back and nail me perfectly right in my line of vision with my right eye, which is my dominant eye. So I set the glass there, set the lenses in, got a new replacement set, and uh, everything's back to normal. Uh, the other thing you really want to look for in glasses is something kind of the wraparound feature where it wraps around the sides of your eyes because a lot of times you will get splatter or things coming in from the side. So it's it's a key point to uh, take into consideration when looking at, at uh, shooting glasses. Yeah, I wore uh, gargoyles for a number of years and they make an accessory that's a side shield that clips onto the earpiece. Right. So you've got full protection all the way back to your ears essentially. And I really like that. And uh, the problem that I had with the gargoyles is scratching them. Uh, I, I have found over the years that I'm much more likely to break or lose a pair of glasses uh, than I can justify, uh, I mean, this the expense of a high-end pair of glasses like Steve's. <laughs> I'll generally go to the uh, sporting goods store and buy a pair of glasses that maybe is normally um, $75 or $100 and try to get it reasonably inexpensively so that when I lose it, I'm not out the $200 that I would have paid. Well, I can tell you that glasses. if you do get an expensive set of glasses, you take a lot better care of them. I would um, imagine that's the yeah, case. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, yeah, it's part of it goes with the territory. So. Yeah. The other nice thing about these is that you can get RX inserts uh, into the glasses on some of the different models so that if you um, do have a prescription or whatnot, you can get that as an insert to the glasses and still maintain your vision. Yeah, I was just discussing uh, with a friend uh, yesterday, actually, about the, my glasses are Deco High Wides. 
and you can send them a prescription and they will make grind the lenses to your prescription. And so that's nice. I mean, it, if, you're, if you don't have good vision uh, and you want your protective glasses, you can buy glasses that allow you to insert your lenses or you can buy glasses where the lenses themselves have the prescription built into them. The thing I know this is that the arms, or whatever you want to call it, temples on yours are kind of hook around the wire. Your yeah. And I like the straight feature of these because it, I find that after a long time with the wire on the back of your ear that it starts hurting after a long time. Yeah, it time. certainly and can. These are really comfortable. It just goes straight back. And yeah. They also seem to work better with if you do use earmuffs. Yeah, that's one of, the, one of those issues where you can spend, like a lot of the items of gear that we're discussing, you can spend a lot of money on something that can be a very high quality, but it's not necessarily suited for shooting, the shooting sport. Yeah, right. And, right. Uh, you know, I've been wearing these glasses uh, for a year, and I'm still not sure I like them. There's certain aspects of them that I like a lot. Um, for instance, they ride high up on your nose, and when you're shooting, you have a tendency to kind of lower your head to the gun a little right. bit. And so because they ride high, when you lower your head just a little bit, that puts your eye now in the center of the lens. And it just it, it I like that effect that I'm not kind of running out of the running towards the edges of the lenses when I'm in my normal shooting stance. Yeah, those glasses are designed definitely for shooting, and I know that a lot of the skeet shooters or trap shooters will use that because of the fact that it keeps the bridge um, well above your line of sight. Yeah, and another thing that I've found is with some of the especially I'll usually rather than change lenses, although I do have two sets of lenses for these glasses, and I have a spare pair of glasses that got three sets of lenses in different colors. I find it easier to just throw on a pair of dark glasses if it's sunny. I'll even find that during the course of a match, I might change my yeah. glasses from one stage to the next because some shooting bays will be out in the open, right. broad daylight. Other bays will be shaded by trees. And so I'll walk into a bay and go, you know, I don't, I'm not going to necessarily want to take the time to dig out a spare lens or whatever. It's easier just to throw on a pair of dark glasses. But one of the things about elevating the lens like this is that I've found that a lot of sunglasses that are just kind of general purpose, they'll call them uh, like sport shields right. or something, will ride a little too low and essentially my eyebrows will seal the back of the lens against my head and any condensation that forms on the lens mm -hmm. is unable to evaporate out. And you basically so fog yourself out. You're, yeah, you, your glasses are fogged up. Yeah. And so just something to be to consider that the application for what you're buying the glasses for is shooting. So think about some of the issues. Uh, you want the side shields, if necessary, or wrap around. You want them to ride so that you're not near the edge of the lens when you're in your normal shooting stance. Um, and you want to make sure you've got some, enough uh, air circulation through here that if you're sweating, running around on the range, that that condensation is not forming and staying on the lens. And some of these actually have, not these in particular, but they'll have holes drilled uh, into the lens to actually ventilate them, to, or at least assist in the ventilation of the glasses. So, yeah. So there's a lot of high tech stuff out there for shooting in terms of glasses.